Hi, my name is Heather Francisco and I'm a board certified behavior analyst with Brett DeNovi and Associates. In today's video, I'll be discussing relational frame theory, or in short, RFT, and stimulus equivalents. This video is based on the following task list items from the BACB's fifth edition task list. B13, define and provide examples of rule governed and contingency shaped behavior. B14, define and provide examples of the verbal operants. B15, define and provide examples of derived stimulus relations. Stimulus equivalence and relational frame theory have generated a considerable body of empirical and conceptual analyses as seen in the works of Hayes et al. 1994 or Sidman 1971. In a 2004 study, the authors Barnes, Holmes, Smeets, Cullinan, and Leader investigated the controlling variables involved in equivalence, class formation, derived relations, and human language and cognition. There has been a recent resurgence of interest in the study of the novel or emergent phenomenon of stimulus equivalence and its related effects, otherwise known as relational frames. Relational frames are a key component of relational frame theory, which is considered an account of both stimulus equivalence and human language. According to Sidman, 1971, stimulus equivalence refers to the process of learning a series of related conditional discriminations. The involved stimuli often become related to each other in ways that were not explicitly trained and thus provides a behavioral basis for every day correspondence between words and things, between what we say and what we do, and between rules and contingencies. Further, stimulus equivalence has been linked directly to the behavior analysis of human language in a variety of contexts. For example, recent neuroscientific findings such as fMRIs have shown brain activation patterns produced during the formation of equivalence relations. There is a plethora of evidence pointing to stimulus equivalence as a crucial component to human learning, language, and cognition, and it entails three distinct properties. One, reflexivity, two, symmetry, and three, transitivity. Reflexivity refers to if A, then A. In other words, a picture of a dog is equivalent to or the same as a picture of that same dog. Symmetry refers to a reversible property. If A, then B. If B, then A. In other words, a picture of a dog is equivalent to or the same as the spoken word dog. Likewise, the spoken word dog is equivalent to or the same as a picture of the dog. Transivity refers to if A, then B. If B, then C if A then C. In other words, a picture of a dog is equivalent to or the same as the spoken word dog. The spoken word dog is equivalent to or the same as the written word dog. The transitive property then concludes that the picture of the dog is equivalent to or the same as the written word dog. In relation to stimulus equivalence, Relational frame theory, RFT, according to Hayes et al. 2001, adopts the view that the core defining element in many psychological phenomena, including stimulus equivalence, naming, understanding analogy, metaphor, and rule following, is a particular type of relational responding that is amenable to learning or operant analysis. Humans, as well as many other species, are capable of responding to non-arbitrary relations between or among stimuli. RFT argues that relations are based on a history of reinforcement for responding relationally, given an appropriate context in which to do so. Additionally, RFT argues that derived relating can be brought under antecedent and consequential control, which has a great deal of implications in regards to behavior analysis, learning, and the behavior change process. While RFT does not discredit or discount stimulus equivalence or its properties, it is important to note that RFT considers these properties instances of relational responding rather than strict properties. 
RFT is broader in scope than the equivalence phenomenon, and thus a new set of terms is required to define relational frames. The term mutual entailment, for instance, encompasses symmetrical responding, but also refers to responding that cannot be considered strictly symmetrical. For example, in a frame of coordination, if A is the same as B, then B is the same as A. That is, the relation is symmetrical. In a comparative frame, however, if A is better than B, then B is worse than A. The relations are not strictly symmetrical, but they are mutually entailed. Similarly, the term combinatorial entailment encompasses transitivity, but also refers to relations that cannot be described as transitive. For example, transitive responding in the context of a frame of coordination would entail that if A is the same as B and B is the same as C, then A is the same as C. However, in the case of a frame of opposition, if A is the opposite of B and B is the opposite of C, then the relation between A and C is one of sameness, not opposite. Therefore, the relations are not strictly transitive, but they are combinatorially entailed. That is, the relations between A and B and between B and C combined to entail the relations between A and C and between C and A. According to RFT, therefore, both transitivity and equivalence responding are instances of combinatorial entailment in which the trained relations are the same as the derived relations. Another key component to RFT is that of contextual cues. RFT suggests that equivalence responding is typically controlled by particular or specific contextual cues, such as same as, different than, etc. RFT also encompasses what's termed transfer of functions and addresses physical properties, whereas stimulus equivalence does not explicitly do so. For example, in stimulus equivalence, reflexivity states that a piece of candy is equivalent to the word candy written on a piece of paper. However, it's evident that just because a piece of paper says candy, it does not mean that it is actually an edible candy. The transfer of function where difficult physical properties serve different physical functions certainly influences future responding to these stimuli. How then might RFT account for respondent data? In addition to naming, children are normally taught that events that are correlated in time and or space often go together. In a typical early education exercise, for example, a child might learn that a picture of a dark cloud and the words dark cloud should be matched to a picture of rain and to the word rain. In effect, the temporal and spatial correlation of actual dark clouds and rain is used to establish, in certain contexts, an equivalence relation between these events and the arbitrary stimuli, dark cloud, and rain. After sufficient training of this type, a child might respond in certain contexts to other correlated events as participating in equivalence relations in the absence of explicit reinforcement. For example, having established an equivalence relation between actual lightning and the word lightning, and another equivalence relation between actual thunder and the word thunder, given an appropriate context, such as being asked by a teacher about different types of weather, the child might say thunder and lightning go together. In effect, the correlation between lightning and thunder in the natural environment is sufficient to establish an equivalence relation between these events and their descriptors if a the child has had an appropriate history of arbitrarily applicable relational responding and b is provided with an appropriate context such as being asked a question about types of weather from a teacher with these similarities and differences mentioned between rft and stimulus equivalence the authors moved their focus to training procedures the most common stimulus equivalence training procedure is known as match to sample, or MTS for short. In this particular training procedure and subsequent testing trials, participants are trained or tested on their abilities to match stimuli based on varying features, forms, or functions. While this procedure is highly utilized in a wide array of settings, the authors encourage the audience to use variations of MTS to extend the range 
of experimental preparations. Some variations mentioned are complex stimuli, modified successive conditional discrimination, sequence training procedures, respondent type training procedures, and the precursor to relational evaluation procedure, or PrEP for short. Cullinan et al. in 1998 conducted a study using MTS and PrEP. An example can be seen on the screen. 20 undergraduates were trained and then tested. The stimuli used were nonsense syllables and are represented here by the alpha numerics A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2. Stimuli were presented on a computer and subjects responded by pressing or not pressing various marked keys on the keyboard. The overall experimental design involved each subject being trained in a series of conditional discriminations using either a standard MTS procedure or the PrEP. The MTS procedure was to demonstrate appropriate understanding of equivalence. Respondent type training procedures have been utilized and have demonstrated that in the absence of explicit MTS training and differential reinforcement for responding, equivalence responding has been reliably generated. One possible explanation is derived naming, which takes into account an individual's learning history. For example, a parent may say to their child, ball, while simultaneously holding a ball. In other words, certain things or stimuli just go together and are learned without explicit match to sample training and differential reinforcement. The PrEP was studied thoroughly in this article and it consists of a go, no go, or a yes, no responding procedure like the one evaluated in the 1985 study by D'Amato and Colombo, in which both positive and negative discriminative stimuli were used and participants were asked to respond based on stimuli presented in trials. It was found that this procedure, regardless of which version was used or the number of training trials required to teach criterion, was generally as effective as explicit MTS in producing symmetry. However, equivalence was not reliably produced. One possible solution was to introduce same and different as response options as a source of contextual control and the results of several studies suggested that this modification was required for producing equivalence class formations. This highlighted the notion that relational responses illustrative of stimulus equivalence are flexible, separable behaviors that may be under the control of specific environmental variables. For example, given a contextual cue for different, a circle would go with a square. But given a cue for same, the circle would go with another circle. The critical point here is that the lack of relational specificity inherent in words and terms such as yes and goes with may provide reliable control over symmetry or mutual entailment, but not over combinatorial entailment. Now, based on the PrEP study and RFT, it has been noted that contextual cues for equivalence responding are present in MTS. This may include education or a learning history for discrimination and matching. RFT thus predicts that a history of match to sample training and testing may provide a context for equivalence relations. In other words, using the contextual cues, same and different, should increase the likelihood of equivalence responding. The authors of this article synthesized many studies but were unable to draw definitive conclusions about the adequacy of RFT as the modern behavior theory of human language and cognition. The authors pulled bits and pieces from each theory, concept, property, and principle and demonstrated the value of exploring different methodologies in studying derived relations. Specifically, the development of the respondent type training procedure and PrEP have given rise to the implications of RFT as an account of human language and cognition, as well as the role of manipulating specific environmental or contextual cues. For certain learners, explicit match to sample training may not be needed. For other learners, teaching explicit relations can help establish rule-governed and contingency-based behavior. Using RFT and stimulus equivalence training for learners could promote independence 
and problem solving skills and can help learners contact new reinforcement contingencies. Learning history plays a very crucial role in derived relations. However, as explicitly stated in the article, subsequent research and investigation is required. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to Evan Rubin, aspiring BCBA. Post any comments and questions down below.